So, it's alive! Bloody hell, it's actually booting Windows 10! I did not expect it to get this far. Stupid Comptar Productions presents... In association with Strange Weather Productions presents... So yeah, welcome back to Cool Dude Clem's Extremely Messy Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Yep, I'm sorry I haven't been making many videos lately, but I haven't really had much to do videos about. Now, I was going to do a test of coil video. I started building this circuit. This is one of Steve Ward's designs. I need to find out that I don't have this part here. I thought I did have a spare one of those chips laying around. But when I looked at the chip, I found that it wasn't the chip that I thought it was. Anyway, I do have the power supply part of it done. So I guess that's something. Anyways, I think it's time that I built the new Franken PC. So at the moment I have my laptop hooked up to a flat screen, touch screen TV, monitor, whatever you want to call it. But this thing really just doesn't cut it for the kind of stuff I want to do. And these two boards are orders of magnitude more powerful than what my laptop can do. So I'm going to make a new Franken PC. So I've already gone and built a shelf which apparently I've started putting things on. And this is where the replacement hardware is going to live. Before I start putting this onto the bench though, and before I start putting all this stuff onto that shelf though, there's still a few things I need to do. Now, I want to install Windows XP onto this computer, and I know it can run Windows XP, and other computers won't, you know, but this hardware is just about old enough to run Windows XP. The trouble is that if I put Windows XP on here, because it's a 32-bit version of Windows XP, it's not going to see all of the RAM that I've got in here. I've got 8 gigs of RAM, and it's only going to see about 3 gigs of that, so I don't know if there's a way to make that so it sees the full 8 gigs or not. So I've got to look into that. Also, I want to see if I can find a driver for the touchscreen, because I tried it before with the touchscreen on Windows XP. It didn't work. I didn't know what it was, so... Hopefully I can find a touchscreen driver that will work with Windows XP. And if that all checks out, then I'm going to install Windows XP on this thing. If it doesn't, I'll have to dual boot with Windows XP and maybe Windows 7 or Windows 10. Of course, if I had my way, I'd have it all running on Linux, but... You know, a lot of the software I use is dependent on Windows, so Linux isn't really an option here. But I think one of the most important things, though, is to check that this stuff still works. What a mess. Anyway, it's time to test this thing, so I've got it all wired up. I've even put a hard drive there, I don't know what's on it. It's just one I pulled out of my stash. Might even have a bootable OS on it, probably Linux or something like that. Looked at the motherboard, so I know... You know, I've got the motherboard manual up, so I know which pins the power pins under this mess of cables here. So we can test this and see if it works. Now if this doesn't work, this is going to be another video that doesn't make it to YouTube. But hopefully that won't be. Alright, I'm going to turn my monitor on to VGA. That's another thing, I don't even know if this has got onboard graphics. Alright, on the VGA inputs. Let's turn that on. And just to find something that I can short those two pins together so we can power up this beast. There's these two pins here. Okay. It's come to life. Can we get anything on the screen? Oh yeah. It lives! Yeah, okay, well, I'm not concerned about that. We have a picture from the board, and that's what's important, so this thing is alive. So we have a system that at least posts. So that's good. 
Now that's left to do is, well, I've got to put all this together properly. Install an OS on this drive. Find some touchscreen drivers for Windows XP and see if we can use the full 8 gigs of RAM and we should be good. Alright, so I thought I'd better make the on, off and reset buttons. So I've got this little bit, little scrap of circuit board here. A couple of buttons, a couple of LEDs. So the button, this one, this, the, this button right here is going to be the power button. This one is going to be the reset button. And the two LEDs here, the red one is going to be for power, and the green one is going to be for disk access. I know it's usually the other way around with the LEDs, but you know, this is my project, so I'll do it the way I want. Okay, well it's coming to get the... Uh, oh, doesn't come out too good, did it? Well, okay, it's coming together now. I got the little panel with the start and reset buttons. I know it doesn't look like much, but yeah, I think I've got them wired into the right place. Hopefully, the little diagram I drew is correct. So, next thing I want to do is I just want to change the heatsink compound in there because that's still using the old stuff that was on there. And I'll power this up and well, we'll see if it works. I've also got a different hard drive in there. Now this one has Windows 10 on it. I'd be very surprised if it actually boots into a stable operating system from that because the hardware changes and everything, but yeah, um, let's see if this works. You know, some people go crazy with their video editing builds. They opt in for the latest processor with 500,000 million gigahertz and 100 billion cores and all that kind of stuff when really this thing is perfectly adequate for my needs. I see your little feet. Well, we're almost ready. So I've replaced the heat sink compound. I'm also going to put this little thing into it. This is a hub off another computer. This had firewire and a couple of USBs. Obviously I won't be able to use the firewire port, but should be able to use the USBs, which is this connector here. Um let's just make sure it's lined up properly, that will go in there. Like so. And now we have a couple of front USBs. So, let's plug this all in, turn it on, and see if it works. Then, let's turn power on there. And let's press the button, see if it comes on. It doesn't. Did I do something wrong? Make sure it's not. Okay, I seem to have got those buttons backwards. Never mind, I will have to do that, but yep, yeah, we're getting the picture on the screen, so that's good. I'm just out of curiosity, let's see what it does if it tries to boot from this hard drive. So, it's alive! Bloody hell, it's actually booting Windows 10! Bloody hell! I did not expect it to get this far. Because this is just from another computer, this hard drive. Well, this is just a spare hard drive that I installed Windows 10 on another computer. I have no idea what it's going to do. But we'll just let it sit for a while and see what happens. Ah, oh, hard drive is... Um, this DVD drive is spinning up. I think there's a disc in there. I don't know what's in it, but... Pinnacle TV card at store. Well, uh, that's going to be pretty much useless. But yeah, it's actually booting into Windows 10. Okay, that is crazy. 
I don't have a keyboard hooked up to this, so I won't really be able to do anything, but... I don't expect that to do... I don't expect anything to happen. I'll say it again. I didn't expect this to actually work. Okay, so I just commandeered the mouse off my main computer and plugged it into the front port there to see if that works, and indeed it does seem to. This copy of Windows 10 is not going to live on this hard drive for much longer, but this is just to see if anything works. Oh, looks like I'll have to take my keyboard as well. And my computer seems to think that there is a face on the screen at the moment, I have no idea why. Well, this is really unexpected. The new Franken PC has booted into that version of Windows 10, and it hasn't even complained. That's the computer or Windows 10, they seem to be quite happy with each other. I appear to have installed Classic Shell on this. I don't know what's actually on this drive, so I'll have a little look on this drive to see. Help first point the camera at what I was actually looking at. And that's the problem I do. I'll be talking and talking and talking and the camera will slowly be drifting down because I'm not looking through it. And a few seconds later I realise that the camera is not pointed at what I'm looking at. Also, this appears to be a version of Windows 10 that I've installed the classic theme onto. As I remember, I did used to do that. So, I'm just going to have a, look, um, a little look at what's on this hard drive. And then, um, yeah, it looks like this has all been a success. I'm also going to put a graphics card in, so we're not using the integrated graphics, but... Yeah, I'll see you when I'm doing that. So, yeah, it all seems to be working. The only little snag we've got is that the power and reset buttons are the other way around, to what they should be, but I you know, just need to swap these two around. And I'll fix that little problem. And yeah, I think this is just about good to put into the thing. So, I'll be doing that in the next video because I'm sure that this video has gotten already like 5 million, billion, gillion, jazillion minutes in length now. So, until next time, goodbye.